So you want to do a run test to track your progress. Well, I've got three that can be really helpful, whether you're doing sprint, Olympic, Xterra, longer distance triathlons, do athletes, and yes, even runners who want nothing to do with a pool or a bike can benefit from these tests. You want to put them at the end of a recovery week or at least after a day off so you're at least somewhat rested. Now it's your choice whether you do these on a road, a track, a trail, but just make sure you use the same exact course each time so that you can compare your performances. Now you're gonna start off by doing a 10 to 20 minute warm up, and that really depends on your fitness level and how much you've been running. But either way, you're gonna want some of those dynamic movements, uh, uh, the activation exercises to get those muscles firing, get in some easy running, and then you're gonna also incorporate you know, two to four uh, 30 to 60 second strides or pickups where you're really focused on a fast turnover, preparing the body for the stressful, uh, harder effort ahead. After each one of those strides, take you know 30 to 60 seconds. There's no hurry, just let the heart rate come down, recover, and then you can do another one. And you can even mix it up with some of your easy running uh, if you'd like to do that as well. Once you're warmed up, hit the bathroom one last time, get to the start line, hit start on the stopwatch, and go. Hey, it's Eric with the WJ Try with a free video every week that comes from either questions or mistakes that I've made in my running slash triathlon career, or if athletes that I've worked with have specific questions, uh, I'll make a video for them uh, and for all of you. So put a question in the comments below. It might just become a video. And you know other people have the same question, so just put it down. So the first option is just 20 minutes as hard as you can go. It's gonna suck but it's a good suck and it'll make you faster. If you don't have a GPS, so you don't know how exactly far you go, you can sort of flip this test around and a variation is just doing a three mile test all out and measuring your time. Uh, some athletes have asked me, you know, can I do the local 5K? It's, you told me to do three miles, it's 3.1. You know, technically you can, well, there's different situations why you may or may not, but the most common thing is that when are you gonna be able to replicate that? Uh, even if you run the same course, you know, running in with competition with other people, you're going to respond a little bit differently than when you're running by yourself. So the hardest thing about a 5K is that you can't replicate it maybe even to the following year with that same race happens again. So really, these tests are designed to do it by yourself and just everything you got and then replicate that. Option two to track your progress is really helpful for those sprint distance athletes out there because it's a one mile all out. Now that's still helpful for athletes doing longer courses, but uh, you know, three miles is pretty much your race pace if you're doing a sprint. So focus on the mile. Now, a lot of people think, oh, a mile, oh, that seems so much easier. Well, it's not necessarily easier because it's only a mile, you're going that much harder of a pace. So it's still gonna hurt, but it can be a great measure. I mean, I just think miles are brutal. Is there anyone else out there who would rather do a 10K than a mile? Yeah. And option number three is a 30 minute all out. Yes, that's 10 minutes more than the 20 minute all out. Brutal, by yourself. Now, this really is the best measure though if you wanna get lactate threshold and be able to use that heart rate uh, you know, for your future workouts. With the 30 minute test, you're actually only gonna use minutes 10 through 30 as far as your heart rate. Yes, you still go hard the entire time, but when you go hard like that, number one, most people go out too hard uh, the first several minutes, and so that 10 to 30 is a more uh, even pace typically. And then also there's a heart rate lag that occurs when you start running hard uh, from a mostly rested position. So you kind of throw out that first 10 minutes of heart rate and really focus on the, the 10 to 30 minutes, but you do have to run hard the entire time. As tough as that last one was, it's great for being able to have target heart rate ranges uh, for training. Don't forget to do a 10 to 15 to 20 minute cool down, uh, especially at the hard effort. Uh, and it really depends on, again, what you've been doing, what you've been training, how much you've been running in terms of how much uh, you do. You may even be, you know, do some walk running to help uh, calm the system down. Depending on where you're at in the uh, season and what your goals and races are, do these every four to 12 weeks uh, to you know, continually measure that progress. 
So to sum up, option one was 20 minutes slash three miles slash maybe 5K as hard as you can. Number two, one mile as hard as you can. And then option three, 30 minutes as hard as you can. And make sure you have your heart rate monitor for this one especially so you can utilize that lactate threshold and your training zones that become of it. So put a comment below as to what test you're gonna do. And until I see you again, Godspeed and good luck.